Hey everyone, welcome to That Bitch Energy, the podcast. I'm your host, Bianca, and I can't wait to dive into this episode with you. We are here to tap into our grounded, confident selves and really embody that bitch energy, hence the title of my podcast. So without further ado, let's get into this next episode right now. Seen a bitch like me, I'ma come up on ya. Welcome back to another episode of That Bitch Energy. I am so excited about this episode. Why? Hmm, let's see. Uh, It's my birthday episode. I'm really going to tap into some lessons in this episode, and hopefully it kind of gives an aha for some of you. And if not, well, welcome, listen, take a seat, grab some tea. Let's do it. Let's jam. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation, baby. And let's start with lesson number one. Lesson number one, baby, nobody has it figured out. No one has it figured out. No matter how much someone can convince you that they do, they don't. We're all figuring it out as we go. And what I mean by figuring it out is I mean this life, this thing we call life. We're all winging it. We're all figuring it it out as we go. If someone would have told me that in my teenage years, I feel like I would have made some different decisions, baby. (laughs) Yeah, so that's my lesson number one is we're all figuring it out as we go. So baby, do that thing you're so scared of doing. Do that thing that that no one believes that you can do. Do the thing that you know you can do because we're all just figuring it out and it's each path is different. So no one can tell you how your path is gonna work. Lesson two. Live in the moment. Now, you might be thinking, Bianca, uh, I'm living in the moment every moment all the time. But what I mean is, are you in your head a lot of the time? Are you in a conversation thinking about what you're going to say next instead of listening to what the person in front of you is actually saying? Are you watching a movie, but you're in your head or scrolling on Instagram and not actually watching the movie Are you on a hike, but you keep thinking about, oh, I really need to do this thing for my to-do list? Yeah, that's not living in the moment. That is living in the head. And if we just take a breath, we can really come back to the moment here and now. Actually, just doing that before I started this podcast. Oop, there's a fly. Doing that before starting this podcast really grounded me and made me realize like, girl, you can't do this podcast wrong. It's your birthday. It's the lessons you've learned. It's your wisdom. So it brought me back to the here and the now. Instead of being in my head about, am I going to say this perfectly? Am I going to be good enough? Am I going to change somebody's world and someone's life? It's like, well, maybe, maybe not. But what matters is, being here, being now, and enjoying it along the way. Lesson three, health is motherfucking wealth. Am I right? And I don't just mean looking good, eating right, eating healthy. I mean health in every aspect when it comes to body, mind, spirit. Taking care of your body not overindulging in things that are harmful to our bodies. For our mind, not overindulging in thoughts. And I feel like we can go in spirals. We can talk down on ourselves. We can self-sabotage ourselves. But that's all a choice. You can choose to stop doing that and be conscious of when you're doing that and really nip it in the bud while you're in it. Like, let's say I started this podcast and I'm, I'm being like, I, who am I to be a podcaster? Who am I to talk on a podcast and do my makeup beautifully and perform and sing? And when I think those thoughts, and I used to, many moments I would think that way I started changing I was like wait wait that's not true 
that's not true. I am worthy of singing, songwriting, making podcasts, creating art. I am worthy of it. I can do it. So it's easier in that moment to nip it in the bud while it shows up for you. These thoughts are just a passing sensation. They are not true. They are not you. They do not define who you are. They're just thoughts. And you can watch them and let them flow by instead of let it land and stick to you and make you believe it. So that's in the mind, but in your spirit, in your spirit, what frequency are you giving off? What energy do you want to, is it emit or omit? What energy is it that you want to give off to the world? And you have to take care of your spirit and allow love for yourself to give off that grounding, loving energy, which is what I want to give off. Now yours, enter whatever it is for you here, what you want to give off, but I want to show up to my friendships, my relationships, my romantic relationship, my work, my goals with love. And working on spirit can help you, can help me, helps me show up like that. Mm, Good ways to work on spirit is meditate, knowing who you are at your core. Meditation does that. Going on that long walk, turning your phone off. Your body is your home. Treat it that way. You're taking your home with you everywhere you go. And how do you want your home to welcome others? And even to welcome yourself. Because I think a lot of us have not even accepted that we are our home. Which brings so much peace. Lesson four. Rest is essential, baby. Rest is essential. No, rest is not lazy. And no, rest is not only sleep. Rest is also taking time out for yourself to go get a massage, to meditate, to go on that long walk, like I was saying, health is wealth. Um, Work on that project you've been wanting to work on that is like a hobby for you. And you just love, it just lights you up. Giving yourself that time instead of constant grind. Because we're in grind culture is so praised. That's what we're in, is praising the grind culture and the hustle. But rest is essential to be successful while you're hustling. If you want the work to be quality, you've got to rest before you do the work. Or else you're going to be burnout. You're going to be doing half-ass work, and it's going to take you double the time. So might as well prioritize your rest. Just like fitness. If you don't rest your muscles and you only work them out... You're going to get hurt. So rest, work out, rest, work out. And that's when growth happens. And that's in many areas of our lives. And that was a huge lesson I needed to learn. I love that lesson. Lesson number five is connect with nature. Go outside, look at the trees, listen to the wind, listen to birds chirp, listen to crickets. Touch the grass. I think I already said that, but touch the grass, baby. That is so simple yet so important. Go on a hike. Turn your phone off. Don't listen to any music. Let Mother Nature speak to you. Let it give you the wisdom. Let it give you a new perspective on your life because that's what Mother Nature and grounding does for me. And that lesson... Ugh. Thank you, Mother Nature. I love you. Lesson six, do what lights you up, baby. For me, if you don't know already, I'm a songwriter and a performer. And I produce my music as well, along with a co-producer. We co-produce together, but every song I've released has been produced, written, sang by me. And that lights me up. I, I love creating something from nothing, like zero, like it's blank. It's a white sheet of paper. It's a, There's no sound on the, the project yet. 
and I, I create sound and I build up this sound and I build up this feeling and I build up this piece of art and that lights me up so go do what lights you up find that thing if you don't know what that is go try new things take a new class take a dance class go go on and go take a um acting class a go join a group a reading group maybe that lights you up is reading books and connecting with others do more of what lights you up lesson number seven friendship Ah, friends, if you didn't know, we have a loneliness epidemic happening right now. We have a problem right now where loneliness is killing and prematurely killing people because connection builds or helps with longevity of life. And if you look at the the blue zones on the planet, connection is seriously important to these people. So is health. So is having a spiritual practice. The longest living people know the secret. And friendship is so important in this life. And friendships that align with you, that are deep, true connections, not surface level hey girl we only drink together we only get coffee and and vent together no i'm talking about true deep connection friendships it's so important lesson eight family family connection so along with friendship family connection is so important now it doesn't have to be your blood relative whoever it is that you consider family connecting with them deeply not surface level getting to the core Um, but, and also if it's toxic family members, just leave that out. I'm talking about connections that light you up and that fuel you. And also you can, you're fueling that person as well. It's not one sided with the friendship and the family relationships as well. You guys are fuel for each other. And that's so important for health is connections, deep connections. Lesson nine, animals are pure love. For example, I have two cats and two dogs. I have a black cat, he's Salem. I have a gray cat, she's Onyx. I have a golden retriever, that's Cosmo. And I have a, we don't know her breed, Coco from the streets. We found her on the streets, literally. But they all have things they want to do all the time and I don't allow. We don't allow them to just eat endlessly so they can get sick and overweight and just kill themselves. But no matter what we do, they show us unconditional love And that love is quite unbeatable. And I feel like you won't understand unless you have a pet or an animal that you love. Even if if it's not your pet and you see the animal daily and you show it love, it's going to love you back. And that love is... (sighs) That love is pure. Oh, and I forgot to say in the family lesson is a a mother's love is one of the most pure, unconditional love that a mother and a child only know between each other but that love is one of the highest levels of love and and that's how i feel with animals as well that's an also another one lesson 10 feel your motherfucking feelings when you're pissed baby don't bury it feel it i don't mean go be pissed at people that don't deserve that energy and and even if you might think in the moment they deserve it i'm not saying be pissed and spill it out onto other people I'm saying go feel it. Go be with yourself and feel pissed. Write it down or rage. Get it out. Feel it. If you want to cry, don't just hold it in. Just cry. It's okay to cry. I have to tell myself this constantly because I tend to hold back tears and I tend to feel embarrassed, but we're human. There's nothing embarrassing about being an emotional human. That makes you a human and that makes you a loving lovely person if you have feelings so feel your feelings lesson 11 let go of shame around sex a lot of us especially as women have shame around sex in general or being sexual beings i know religion and certain type of groups have cultivated that fear and shame around it and i'm not having it i'm a human being who is a sexual being as we all are and i'm not going to be ashamed of enjoying sex, enjoying my sexuality, and enjoying pleasure. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm embracing it. I'm actually 
creating this space where I can tune into my sensual energy and embrace that energy and find power in that energy. And you can do this in your own way, but you can do this with yourself. Have a self sensual touch practice with yourself, with a partner, however you feel drawn and what makes you feel powerful in your sensual energy. Stop holding shame around it. That's the end of that. No more shame. We ain't ashamed of our sexuality or our sensuality, baby. We are going to hold that power, claim that power, and walk through life with our sensual power. Lesson 12. Stop caring so much about what other people fucking think. Let that shit go. I don't care who is judging you. It could be your best friend, your mom, your dad, your friend, your family. Whatever it is, who cares? They're allowed to feel it. That does not define you. If they judge you and they think something of you, that defines who they are. Because people in their power do not judge others for wanting to do things that light them up and, and fill their cup. So let go of what other people think. Do what you love. Do what you enjoy. Do what you want. As long as you're not harming others. I'm not condoning harming others. I feel like that goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways. But yeah, stop caring about what other people think. You got this. And I'm telling myself this too. Lesson 13, stop having a scarcity mindset. Stop thinking, I can't afford that. I can't go on that trip. I can't buy that. I can't eat organic food because it's too expensive. My health is not too expensive. I able to buy that organic fruit. I am able to accept anything that comes my way. And if an opportunity shows up for me, I'm not going to let money define me accepting that into my life. I'm going to work towards. Now, I'm not saying go spend uncontrollably and irresponsibly, but I'm saying, are you telling yourself, I can't afford this often? Are you telling yourself, well, they can do that because they have this and I don't often. Is that your mindset? That was my mindset forever until recently. And my world has shifted. And if you can't tell, I'm in a new space. I've moved. I did not let the thoughts of scarcity hold me back from doing the things I've always wanted to do, which was move cities. It's really tough to move, but I can do it. Anyone can do it, truly. Now, I say, give yourself planning. Don't just like up and go. You have $0 in your bank account and move. Now, some people can actually make that work and figure it out, but that's... Not necessarily what I'm saying here. I'm saying you can do anything. Just work towards the goal, whatever it is you want, and you can make it happen. But it starts with the belief. It starts with, the, with your thoughts, and then you take action, and then it shows up for you. I'm telling you, it works. It works for me. So lesson number 13 was get the fuck out of the scarcity mindset. We ain't doing that no more because I'm not going to say stuck, okay? Lesson 14 let go of control. You cannot control many things, if anything. You can help guide a direction, but things are going to show up that are out of your control. And let go of the need to control it. And when you let go, there's a freedom. And actually, you start to embrace what you can't control. And it's not so difficult to endure because you're like, well, cool, that showed up for me. That's what was meant for me. Great. We're going to roll with it. We're going to run with it, girl. So letting go of control truly shifted my life. <laughs> uh, lesson 15, face your fears. Before I was a singer, songwriter, performer, producer, coach, podcast host, I had fear around anyone actually seeing me or hearing me. Letting go of that fear has opened up so many beautiful opportunities for me that if I didn't change my mindset, wouldn't have, I believe, would never have came to me. If I never would have sang on stage, how would I have been able to have the opportunities to sing for all the people that I've sang in front of now? It wouldn't have happened. If I would have just sang in my room by myself alone and expected it to show up for me, that's impossible, truly. So letting go of fear and facing it, facing your fears. Go dance in front of people if that's a fear of yours. If you're afraid to dance in front of others, go fucking dance. You're afraid to sing in front of others, go fucking sing. It's not about being perfect. It's not about being correct. It's about, it's about how you feel when you sing. And people will see the beauty, the energy that you feel. Now, if someone's a negative Nancy and miserable and depressed, 
they're going to judge and be miserable and depressed towards anything and anyone. So it doesn't matter if you're good or bad, they're going to judge you. So let go of it, of the fear of it and face it and go do it. Because truly I feel like fear is just worrying about what other people are going to say or feel about you. So letting go of that fear. Facing your motherfucking fear. Let's face it. Change my life. And last but never the least, lesson number 16. When you start to vibrate at a higher frequency, which all these lessons have led me to, you get back that exact energy from the world, from everything around you. And even if something shows up that isn't of high vibe frequency, your high vibe frequency field doesn't allow it to penetrate in. That lesson, it catapulted me soaring high. And I'm so glad I've gotten to this conclusion of this lesson that when you vibrate at a higher frequency, the world starts vibrating at a higher frequency toward you, around you, for you. Imagine it's like a boomerang. You throw the boomerang, you give it a certain frequency and it comes back just like that. This isn't thinking happy thoughts necessarily. This isn't constantly being positive. This is embracing the shit, embracing the hard shit, and also embracing the good shit, allowing the silliness, allowing the joy, allowing the frustrations, allowing the sadness, not fighting any of it, being open-hearted to it all, and knowing who you are at the core in any circumstance. So that will be, that is the last lesson in my birthday episode that I had for you guys. Thank you for listening. And I feel like if you've gotten this far in the episode, you needed to hear these lessons. And I hope that I can just give you the aha that you needed and the support and the love energy frequency that you needed today. And your girl is turning fatty. Yeah, and that's why I did my makeup super beautiful and I'm so cute, I know. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Come upon ya, ain't nobody want